Are you on? Are you ready? I don't know. I don't know either. It I don't know. It sounds like you're on. Yeah. We'll just let these guys uh, adjust their seating. Hi, folks. You're not too late. Come grab a seat. Come for a fascinating you, ride. You introduce me or what? Uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. I, okay. I, I, I was, I was going to say something that I thought was really cool, right, but now I realize it might blow a piece of your story. Okay. Because is it this story you're telling or is it your story you're telling? Nah. Um, or is it the same combination? story? Combination. All right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, this is a man. Actually, he's one of my, uh, I guess we're colleagues. Yeah. We don't work for the same company, but we have what I would like to call sister companies. Yeah. And the same fashion. Yeah. Same Drive. fashion. We love traveling the world. Yeah. We've got a couple of other things <laughs> in common, but he's going to tell you that during the story because yeah. otherwise I'm going to blow it. Um, seen a lot around the world. Says it there, so I think I can share. It's all about talent. Right? Yeah. It's all about talent. Yeah. The future. It's not about what you do yeah, or yeah. how you do it. It's about why you're going to do it. And what are the skills of tomorrow versus the skills of yesterday? So uh, I'm not going to blow the story. I'm not going to say what I wrote here because I think it might be in there. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how it goes. A campus party. Round of applause. Make him feel at home on this stage. Frido van Riem. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, first, I would really like to thank um, Verena for having me here. Uh, she organized the campus party. So I'm really excited to give you this uh, story. Um, it's about young talent. Um, I just turned 28, so I hope I still fit the criteria. Uh, if I don't, just raise your, uh, raise your hand. Uh, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and ask me anything, right? Uh, time is limited, so if something isn't clear, just ask me. Otherwise, I'm just wasting uh, everybody's time. Yeah? Um, so last week, it was my birthday, I was happy, and somebody gave me a book um, from TED, how to speak like a TED speaker. I was like, sounds interesting. When I opened the book, uh, the first page said, the 21st century is all about ideas, um, which is true. I remember I had loads and loads of ideas, and I always thought I was the one that had the original idea. It ain't true. There are no new ideas. I generally think that almost everybody thought about any idea. Um, even this guy here sitting on Mars, he is there because he had an idea. Um, and if you look at the trends, things are growing exponentially. It's a really difficult word, but exponential, yeah. Um, and why is that? I think a lot of technologies are coming together and they are enforcing each other. So it's growing faster and faster and faster. And then Peter Thiel tries to scare everybody by saying every company will become a software company, which is, makes sense. Um, but you also need to connect the software with everybody. And that's where the Internet of Things all comes in. So if you're looking at an ID, um, I think your ID should fit into the ecosystem. If it doesn't fit in the ecosystem, why is it even worth trying? Um, I don't know if you like Planet Earth of David Attenborough, but I really love him. He is almost 90 years old, but he's curious about what's happening on Earth. And he knows every, every little detail. And for some reason, every species he finds has a clearly existence, and it just completes a certain task. And that's the same with ideas. You just have to find a business model that it sticks within the ecosystem. But if you go on the roller coaster ride, make sure your ID, you know, you're passionate about it. Because if you're not passionate, you're not, you're not willing to go through the pain and the process of working day and night on the thing that you really love to do. So how do you realize that? So how do you realize your ID? Well. Um, they always say, do you have one tip or trick? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, what is it? <laughs> I really like the minions, yeah. <laughs> the, guys, I have to say, there is no trick. The only thing you know, I can say is just do it, fail, you know? I have failed so many times, you don't want to know. I had so many ideas, but they never worked out. I was afraid to share my ideas that somebody else will steal them and walk away. It's not going to happen. They're going to steal your heart. 
and there's no fancy trick. There at one point, oh yeah, I got this idea, and once I have the right idea, it's gonna be big. No, you're just getting started. It's like, hey, join the club. You got a good idea. Welcome. There are like, I don't know, 100,000 other startups or that has a good idea, a team, traction. Well, and this may sound weird, but like the difference between going to YouTube and type in how to do something and actually in university learning the basics, you're still learning. And what I realized a lot of like young thing that I have to go to school and I have to learn this, but it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense. You have to learn the basic first and then you improve on what you already know. So what should you study? Um, let me tell you my personal story to give you an idea what happened to me and how I think, well, I'm not an expert at this, but maybe you got some advice out of it. Um, I was born in 1988. Uh, this is my dad. There's a little joke in it. My last name is Van Dream, and that's why I say I'm a dreamer, but whatever. The world of 1988. Technology wa wasn't that far. Well, it was far, but if you compare it to now, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? When I had to make a phone call remotely, you had this huge thing. I remember <laughs> my dad had it in the back of the car, and he, and he liked to just stop, and then when people were watching, he was like picking up the phone, like, hey, hello, and people, oh, he got a mobile phone. That's interesting. <laughs> I want one as well. And at one point, we got our computer at home. And I had no idea how, how to use it. Um, but I could only watch and see how this little thing works and play some video games on it. And if you talk about imagination and realizing your ideas, uh, I became fascinated about the passion of my dad. He loved theme parks. And he, uh, he, he did some pr nice projects, the Floreado, the Wallaby World, Six Flags. But as a nice result of it, we went to like theme parks and I saw these parks and I was like, somebody had an idea to build a Disneyland like so big. How did he ever do that? So I thought, well, you know, maybe I should look at the story of the people who have actually built it. So I got this book, um, the story of Walt Disney, and I, I, a lot, I looked at the biography, like what were the choices they, they, they made? And they all had the same. They just followed their heart and just go for the, for the big idea and they, they didn't give up. So when I try and I find out how that computer worked at home, I thought, well, wouldn't it be, be great to have you know, some, make some video games or stuff like that? No idea how to do it. But I thought, well, I'm just going to read a lot of books uh, about people that have done it. So what I advise to, to the young, well, I'm young as well, but uh, <laughs> anyway, learn from the people who've done it. If you really want to know how to play tennis, just ask somebody you know who can play really good tennis. Like, can you help me with that? Um, so after I graduated from the University of Groningen, I, uh, I thought, I'm, I'm ready, you know, I, I've got my, my uh, middelbare school, I've got my university, and we're going to start a nice ID. So what I did, I, I started writing business plans. But these business plans, they don't get you anywhere. It's just you put your ID on a piece of paper and you don't really talk to, uh, to people or to customers. And according to those nice Excel predictions you make, which is silly, <laughs> you, you have these massive, massive uh, growth you think you will have. You don't have them. I fail a gazillion times. Why? Because I, I didn't have the skills to actually build something and to validate my assumption. So how should you learn? And this is something that we show at uh, the startup school to each of the students that come and that really wants to pursue their, 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 their ambition. You just have to feel and learn from it. So let's show it. Uh, 
I need to put a thing in. Yep. Right. I need to learn that skill. Je bent op je creatiefst wanneer je vijf jaar bent. Je stelt de hele dag vragen en je lacht om alles. Maar op school moet je stil zijn en mag je vragen stellen als je je vinger opsteekt en je beurt netjes afwacht. Je leert je dan al te conformeren, je aan een norm te houden, normaal gedrag te vertonen. Je wordt steeds minder jezelf en je vormt je naar het gemiddelde. En tegen de tijd dat je acht bent is je creativiteit gehalveerd. Je spiegelt je aan je omgeving en als beloning pas je prima in een vakje. Bij dat vakje pas vervolgens een functie met een beetje geluk vind je later ook nog een baan. Maar met die baan komt ook een manager, een proces en een organisatiedoelstelling. En in ruil voor je maandelijkse doping, ook wel salaris genoemd, doe je structureel offer. Een offer in je autonomie, een offer in je bewegingsvrijheid, eigenlijk een offer in je persoonlijke ontwikkeling. Werken gaat blijkbaar niet over jou als individu, maar over jou als onderdeel van het collectief. Ja, de neuzen moeten wel dezelfde kant op staan. Rond je 44ste bereik je een staat van terminale serieusheid. Je hebt je creativiteit en je unieke eigenschappen voor goed ingeruild, voor conformiteit en structuur. Een structuur die voorspelbaarheid belooft. Een structuur die rust en regelmaat biedt. Een structuur die fouten voorkomt en variatie minimaliseert. Een walhalla voor turfsmurven, vinkvee, maar vooral voor slaapkoppen. Want structuur versuft en wordt onopgemerkt voor werkelijkheid aangezet. Creativiteit gedijt echter bij onvoorspelbaarheid, chaos en diversiteit. Daar geldt, waar twee neuzen dezelfde kant op staan, is er eentje te veel. We moeten organisatie dus vervangen door zelf organiseren. Niet alleen plannen en vergaderen, maar vooral doen en ondervinden. Zelf actie ondernemen, eigen keuzes maken, anders leren leren, anders leren werken. Uit je comfortzone stappen, fouten durven maken en dus experimenteel vaststellen wat wel, maar ook wat niet werkt. Confucius zei ooit, geef me werk dat bij me past en ik hoef nooit meer te werken. Nu is het, doe het werk wat bij je past en je hoeft nooit meer te werken. Doen is immers nog altijd de beste manier van denken. Dus improviseer, doorbreek je vaste gewoontes en overtuigingen. Het ergste is namelijk niet dat je iets niet weet, maar dat je denkt het zeker te weten. Onderzoek, vraag, struikel, faal en doorbreek vooral je routine. Want één ding is wel zeker, als ik meer fouten maak dan jij, dan win ik. Okay, any reactions from it? Who disagrees? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, when I started studying at the University of Groningen, I had no idea that maybe 10 years later I would really need to know those subjects. Because now I'm, I'm busy with coding and the statistics, you know, it comes back. When I want to do an A-B test, you know, you need to know the the foundation of when you can, so can call something, whether it's significant, yes or no, your results. So I always keep saying, like, try to have the basics in first before you go to the next level. And try to find an environment where you can fail. Because the faster you fail, you know, the faster you, you will learn. Um, I had a really nice opportunity to do the thesis on knowledge sharing in Alibaba in China. I learned a lot about ecosystem, how it all fits together. But I could just do whatever I would like to do and nobody was finger pointing me like, oh, that's not correct. I could fail, you know? So try to find an environment where you can do that as well. Because eventually, you know, the most important thing is that we are bridging the gap between what you're learning at the university that you can also apply that when you start working at a company. And what we notice now, everybody that is graduating is coming on a job market. And when they have the interview, they ask them questions like, can you do Google Analytics? Uh, oh, do you, by the way, know Firebase that Google just launched? And you know, can you do a Twitter ad? And like, no, I don't have those skills. Oh, I'm sorry, that we're not able to talk to you. Maybe you need to do it in a traineeship. And then you're gonna apply for a traineeship, guess what happens? You get the same result. You don't have the skills. So what happens if you, s you see just like a waterfall, people with three years working experience applying for, for positions and people with one year work experience applying to internship? Well, what is happening to the people that graduate? 
they want to learn, but they don't have an environment to go, you know, fail and, and learn those things. So this is a really big problem, you know. And employment rates is, is rising, so we need to solve this. Bridging the gap. So what we believe is that if you listen to the companies with the skills they require, we need to teach that to them as well. And that's what we try to do at, uh, at the BSSA. We try to look at what are the skills that the companies are requiring. And then we ask uh, the students when you, when you graduate, like, join the BSSA. And the good thing is now you know, the, the government is actually paying for the course because they really want to crack this problem of getting young talent a good job. So we have like a sort of university structure, university BSA, and then you have got faculties below. Now web development is given by the New York Coding and Design Academy from the USA, together with Le Bourgogne from France. Then we have growth hacking from the Talent Institute. That's our part. And then UX design, which will launch on the 5th of September. Content creation and experience design by Hyper Island in Sweden. And content creation by Upstart in the Netherlands. So what do you learn if you like go to this startup school? Um, growth hacking is something that's a, a buzzword. Everybody's talking uh, about it. We need growth hacking. We need grow growth hacking. Um, so we thought, let's set up a course on growth hacking. Does anyone know what growth hacking is? Who heard about growth hacking? Well, only Nick, yeah. Nobody? Yeah, you? How would you define growth hacking? I'll come to you. Well, I think it's uh, just doing marketing that you can actually measure uh, by a lot of uh, analytics and different tools data. That's correct. It's nothing fancy. Growth hacking is just marketing, but it's purely based on data and data analytics. Because why? We, we, we are having everything online, so we have all these tools out there that are able to track you. And with the data, you can grow faster because you can set up experiments. And that's what we try to teach also the students. Like, as soon as you have an ID, how you think you can, you can improve the conversion on a website, you just go and experiment. Build, measure, learn. So this course on growth hacking, it's a, it's a seven months uh, course. We have one full-time education. We also have, uh, you know, shared curriculum with all the other uh, classes. So we have some bonding. Because in the end, what our philosophy is, is that each of these students, they go through a seven or nine month uh, course. And we hope that they have some real bonding in the beginning and work on that idea, which they're passionate about. And then in the end, after seven or nine months, hey, maybe they can even start working together. That's the whole idea. So you have one full-time month of education, then you do traineeship at a company, and one day you come back on a Friday for lectures, soft skill sessions. We have founders coming over to talk about their experience. Because don't forget, you know, it's not all about work, work, work. It's also about, you know, mental health. It's also about eating well, sleeping. Like, I'm so surprised that people are not sleeping enough. Just eight hours of sleep or seven hours of sleep, you really need to do that. Um, growth hacking, we teach them the model, which we call the growth engine. And it's basically the five steps where the user find us, through Google, through Facebook, how are users activated, are users coming back? Because you can, th you can throw in users to your website, but if they're not coming back, well, apparently you haven't built something that's valuable. Referral, like are people talking about your product or service to other people? And finally, revenue. Your sole purpose as a startup is to find the business model. As soon as you find a business model, you're defined as a skill up. Then you need to scale. And then, then growth hacking comes in place. A lot of people think that you can growth hack yourself to product market fit. Well, growth hacking only comes in place when you have found a growth engine and you know where to step on the gas and what the return on investment is of the money you put in every acquisition channel. 
So next in the model of a growth engine, we try to teach them the process and the mindset that they're able to quickly come up with an ID to design it, experiment, and then analyze it. And then finally, some hard skills, concept, and methodologies. All our students, when they walk away, have a Google Analytics certificate. They're able to build landing pages. Um, we're now doing more classes with New York Coding and Design Academy. Tomorrow, we have a, um, uh, a Twitter bootstrap deep, deep dive that students are able to build their personal website, uh, optimize it for search engine optimization, and stuff like that. Um, and very important, work experience. When the students go to their trainee company, they have all these great ideas what they want to do, but then they're faced with actually like working in an organization with processes and stuff like that. You know, you also need to learn that. So these are some of the traineeship companies where our students are currently going to uh, and are trained. And I'm really happy uh, to have these companies on board. So we try to give them access to the ecosystem. So as soon as you're in the ecosystem, you can have all the help you want, but you also need to give something back. So we run three times a year, in January, in April, and in September, and you're just able to, uh, uh, well, if you wanna quit, you can, but uh, <laughs> that's all up to, uh, up to you. But uh, if, if I see what is happening now, when the January batch started, they were all unemployed, and now they're getting job offers. So it's, for some reason, it's, uh, it's working. So where, where is this all located? It's located in B Amsterdam, BSA. And well, if you like it, you can start on the 5th of September. So uh, be cool, stay in school. Any questions? Well, I'll certainly start with one. Um, you were talking about study, education. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. And then you named a whole bunch of subjects. Yeah. Well, clearly I'm a few years older than you, but I saw <laughs> subjects like growth hacking and UX design and UI and stuff that, you know, I have no idea what it said. Yeah. I don't remember those being at school when I was, you know, at school. True. Is this a new wave of, of education? Is it a new new wave of jobs? Is it, you know, where, I, where is this heading? I, th I think the most important thing is what we try to do is that we listen to what these guys are saying. Like, this, these are the skills that we actually, that, that we need. And then we try to, 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 be, to tailor that and bridge the gap between what you're, here, what you're learning here at the university and what, you, and what those guys need in terms of skills. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like the real world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can say yeah, the real world. And the theory world. Yeah. And but I think you said at the beginning, you have to know the theory before you can yeah. start to get to this, right? Yeah, but the funny, the funny thing is there is so much similarity between the university and companies. Because when you, when you go to university, you need to do research papers. You need to do assumptions. This is what I think, and I'm going to go out in the field and see whether it, it is true, yes or no. And when you're starting a startup, it's actually writing a thesis. Like, what is my, my assumption? And then you're going to test it. What do you mean by an assumption? Uh, by an assumption, I mean, for example, if you want to have a web shop for shoes online, the most risky assumption is, will people buy shoes online? So you need to validate that first. So you should check that out and find out, is that true? Yeah. Are there enough people that want to buy those shoes, and do they want to buy it online, and will they trust my brand? Yeah, and correct. Cool. Questions from the audience. There must be a ton by now. You are the talent of tomorrow. Are you, are, you, are you guys learning this stuff already? How many of you went to a school for growth hacking? I see a couple of people like, yeah, yeah. not so much. <laughs> Hang on, we can't hear you. I, uh, I find the uh, uh, growth hacking interesting, uh, but some of the stuff we kind of learn at school, but not completely. So yeah, yeah. that's why I find it so interesting. All right. And what are you working on? What do you do? At the moment, I study at uh, digital media and communication, so most of the stuff we do get in school, but not as detailed. All right, so you're doing uh, digital media communication. So these last two talks, were you here for the one before? 
the, the media, ah, uh, you missed a great talk. Fritos was good too, but it's all about how do you convince and persuade people. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I think you've got a question, right? Yeah. Uh, you're obviously talking about the lean startup method, aren't you? When you talk about build, test, and learn. So is that yeah. something that, that you teach? You yeah. Know, is yeah. that the main method? Yeah, so if we look at the first week of the program, um, they have to come up with an idea and they have to test it and go out and actually talk to customers. And the weird thing is, is that a lot of people are scary about that, but there are so many answers where you just listen and ask the right questions. So get out of this mode and get into like this mode and actually talk to somebody. Yeah. So it sounds like you might be an expert. I actually teach entrepreneurship at a, a University of Applied Sciences and we teach them the Lean Startup Method so I can relate to what you're talking about. Yeah. Thanks. I'm sorry, which university? Um, Breda University of Applied Sciences in the Digital Media Academy. Bre Breda University. Yeah. Ah, nice. Sounds like you guys are going to be talking uh, quite soon in the future. Maybe yeah. you can do a guest lecture for us. <laughs> oh, I would love to do that. So. <laughs> All right, <laughs> maybe another question from the audience. Yeah, hi. Hi, I'm a bachelor student, business. Yeah. And I'm now doubting, in my, almost in my last year, and I'm doubting whether I'm going to do a master or whether I'm going to work actually. But do you think this could be like the perfect substitute for my decision? Um, I don't think it's a substitute. It depends on what your goal is. What are you studying? Business. Business. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Yeah. Like, uh, if I speak for myself, I, I first thought, okay, I'm just going to do the whole um, I don't know the English word, but a uh, bachelor and, and master, and then, then, then I'll, I'll see what I want to do. But if I didn't do my masters, I wouldn't have done this one. And this <laughs> I wouldn't want to have missed this one. It was in 2011 when Alibaba wasn't known. <laughs> so I learned a lot. So it's, yeah, it's up to you what you want to do. So I would ask the question a slightly different way. What do you really want to do? Forget about study. Nobody wants to study. Well, not many people. They're using study to get to somewhere or something. So what do you really want to do? Like, If you could spend seven days a week doing anything you want, except that, <laughs> how would, uh, with that smile on your face, what would you do? Create cool stuff that I love. Great. Okay. So then do that. And whether yeah. you can do that with a master's or whether you need to go into the workforce or create a company, but keep that goal in your mind and then figure out what's the right journey to get there. Uh, uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Pien. I would like to add something to the talking to the customers part because uh, especially when you talk about disruptive ideas, I think you shouldn't ask the customer, hey, do you want this? Because, for example, in the 90s, when you would ask people, hey, would you like to have a mobile phone? No one wanted it. There's a, a video on YouTube where actually a reporter went on the street like, oh, would you like to have a mobile phone? And like, no, I have an answering machine, and uh, I don't need to be reachable all the time. And So yeah. how do you view that? No, I, I, I think that's the, weir the, the wrong question. You don't ask, what do you want? You're asking, what's your problem? And then you listen. Like, um, as soon as somebody starts talking about their problems, you have to listen. It's also in uh, relationships, I think. Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, we, so we I, go I, I got a question because I want to follow on from that. Hands up and loud and proud, all of you. How many of you here have a mobile phone? Okay, keep your hands up. Put your hand down. Wait, I got to get this the right way around. Put your hand down if you use the phone application every single day. So by default, mm. half of this room doesn't use the telephone. So they didn't want mobile phones. They wanted mobile communication devices. And actually, they didn't want the device. They just wanted to be connected. And so if you'd have asked the question, would you like a mobile phone? Well, you saw the answer. The answer was no. But what about real-time information? How much would that improve your life? Well, that depends on what you do. If you're a writer, it's probably really distracting. If you're a researcher or a journalist, it could make or break your career. So it's all about what's the job, and that doesn't mean your job title, but what are you trying to get done at any moment? Another question, perhaps. Or I'm just going to pick on people. We have here a oh, question. There he is. Hi. Uh, why is the focus on startups? Uh, because you are saying in the story, uh, they are getting a job. So, 
they're not starting uh, the, uh, on their cell on the end of the curve. Right. Um, I think that when you go to the, for example, B BSSA, you can say like, okay, I'll, I can do two things. Either at the end, I really want to pursue the idea or, of building something, or I just want to learn it in an environment which is already growing and have the team all together. And that's up to the student. And we just guide them in that, in that process. We, we don't care, as long as we, we realize that that, that he has the skills to work for themselves. What we're seeing now is that students that are actually done with the growth hacking course, that they're consulting companies on growth hacking. I'm like, whoa, that, that escalated quickly. <laughs> you know? I, I'm uh, actually proud enough to say we gave their first graduate uh, uh, a job in our company. Yeah. And when we are a startup, we're a two-year-old company and we're looking at high growth, but we can't have all of us being the entrepreneur, right? Because that's not gonna work. So we need an awesome team of kick-ass people who are motivated, they're talented, they can work autonomously. Uh, and in this case, we happen to pick one up who, uh, yeah. who fitted that profile, but he doesn't want to be an entrepreneur yet. So that's, you know, for us, that was perfect. For him, that was perfect. And, well, we got a family discount, so that was okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any more? Another question from the audience, or I'm just going to come and sit randomly next to people until you start uh, uh, saying, Talking, I yeah. know they're in there. It's an interesting... It is. Well, it is. I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> all right. I gave them fair warning, right? They're all getting yeah, nervous yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah. oh, no, no, no. So I'm going to come down here. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You doing okay? Yeah. Are you having fun? Yeah. Are you nervous? A little bit? Yeah. That's okay, because I'm actually going to ask you, what's your question? Uh, I don't have a question. Uh, I don't. I just came up. <laughs> all right, Frida, what's the one thing this guy needs to know? Are you in a rush, or do you have all the time? Oh, what a philosophical question. Yeah. He says he has time. Actually, I, I, think, the que I think that question was the answer. Yeah. Just, we spend all I of our life in a rush. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like people say, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I need to do something. I'm like, yeah, yeah chill, you know? You, you, you determine what you want to do. There's nobody, uh, well, of course, you need to pay the rent and the bills and, and stuff like that. All right, this guy's I'm running away, so I'm wondering what's more important. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Did you learn something from Frido? Um, yeah, kind of. Kind of? Not too much. Ooh. What were you <laughs> hoping to hear? I have no idea. I actually just sat here through the other presentations. Okay. So you were like captive audience. You felt like it was not the right time to leave. Much, yeah. Well, that's uh, fair enough. That's good feedback too. Right. What's yeah, your... What, what I, I, what, one thing I just want to say, because I really hate the term growth hacking. It is, it is it, exact, exactly what you said. It is just a buzzword, it's a marketing term to make it sound nice, but it's just data-driven marketing, so I can't recall that what it is. Because data-driven marketing sounds really fucking boring. Yeah, yeah, that's so, probably right. So it, it was the first trick of growth hacking, right, was to rebrand it that was a growth hack in it, never mind. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> have a great trip. My, oh, it works again. I'm, go I'm going from one side to the other, that? round in circles. Sorry, once again, um, I want to introduce myself a little bit. Um, I'm from a, a medium hosting company. Uh, I want to say to the students that it's, I'm working for a lot of startups. I think we have 4,000 startups as a customer and everyone, everyone customer is searching for the people that has a uh, study like UX, uh, study like, um <laughs> yeah, please give me the list. <laughs> Uh, so it's uh, very important if you're now thinking about hey, I want to do business and I'm not so sure I want to work Please do something like this. I know in the Netherlands. We're searching 40,000 people They can program they can do UX they can do a B testing uh, I got a lot of customers that uh, are going down in conversion on this moment because they don't have the people to uh, to get the conversion high that pay a lot on AdWords. I got customers that pay millions of dollars every year on AdWords only because they don't have the time or the people to do the, uh, the eBay testing and the conversion and something like that. So they want to invest in, in the people now. And uh, if you do a course or a master or something like that for a year, it, it pay directly yeah, back. You don't need 
to be an uh, interviewer because uh, some people, uh, not everyone wants uh, to work uh, 200 years, uh, 200 hours a week. Uh, this man, <laughs> maybe not, but, um, um, uh, but the people are needed. And uh, for the mo for the 10 years, I guess, uh, there are a, a lot of people needed to do this work and uh, the company wants to invest in you. Yeah. But you need to go to school for that. That's yeah. what I want to say. Who, who, <laughs> who is, by the way, still at school? Well, one, two, three. Four, yeah, that's about half the audience. That's okay. Uh, who who's graduated? One, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Any more questions? <laughs> Just ask me anything. Yep. So I want to learn tons of stuff. So I want to build things. I want to um, do some marketing stuff. How do I even begin? I, I'm in school. I need to do all my crappy schoolwork. And yeah. But I want to do things. What a great question. Where is the beginning? Where is the beginning? Well, I would say if you really, really, really want, want to swim, you just dive into the pool. <laughs> but make sure you learn the basics, otherwise you drown. But... Uh, <laughs> It's do do you have like um, an ID in an, in the direction you want to go, or is it just learn everything? I mean, you can learn to play piano till learning to code. Yeah, he's got mine. Technical stuff, so coding um, is a, a part of what I'm doing already at school, but I want to do more. All right. So do you, do you think that this will help you, or do you think like what? Why did you do this? <laughs> because I'm a student, I'm still used to um, learning all the time, learning, learning, but um, what's part of it is that the fun that's supposed to come with everything you want to do is very much uh, quickly just pushed away because you need to do all the deadlines and, and everything at once. So I think if you just can focus on, on the things you want to do, I think it will help. That's it. I totally agree. Totally agree. So yeah, might just go for it. Yeah, it all sounds easy, and I know it's hard, but yeah. Right? Maybe I'm just gonna wrap it up. And final question, and then who is joining the workshop afterwards here? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna give a workshop as well. Two workshops on growth hacking and on uh, from ID to product. Yeah, so thank you guys. I hope uh, I didn't waste your time, and if so, my apologies. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> but, you know, they set their, their own free will. So uh, that was a terrible round of applause. I'm going to give you the, uh, the full campus party overnight treatment. You can take it home, set it up in your bedroom, and you pretend that you're here with, uh, with all the youngsters tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a huge round of applause for his time. Frido from Dream.